Here we've got our helix, and the nice thing is the parameterization is given to you. So that's quite nice. We're asked to calculate the following path integral. So you can think of these components. So x, the x component is a function of t, y is a function of t, z is a function of t. My a and my b, my limits of integration, are going to be respectively 0 and 2 pi. So to calculate my line integral, first of all, I've got my parameterization. Let's, well, I can do two, uh, let, let's just calculate the derivative first. You don't have to, you can do it the other way. So I differentiate the components with respect to t. So cosine, that's going to go to minus sine. Sine's going to go to cosine. And t is going to go to 1. Now, of course, that's, that, that, that derivative is never the zero vector. So it's a smooth, and it's continuous. It's a smooth parameterization. So let's look at the length or the magnitude of this sort of tangent vector. So we square each of the components, add them together, and take the square root. So sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So I'll get another one where the actually the magnitude of the tangent vector is constant. Again, that's not always the case. It's not always the case. OK. So physically, this would be a tangent vector to the, to the, the helix. So along C. <coughs> f evaluated along our, our parameterization for c is going so that that's our f so it's going to be replace x with cosine y with sine and z with uh, sorry yeah z with t so it's going to be cosine t plus sine t plus t so now what we want to do is take these two multiply them together and integrate with respect to t So let's, our limits of integration are 0 and 2 pi. Our f of r is here. <coughs> our magnitude of our tangent vector is root 2. And so I just want to integrate here. OK? Okay, R is a function of t. F, F, F is um, acting on R of t. No worries. Okay, so now it's it's boiled down to a, a reasonably simple integration. Okay, in fact, you can do these things using inspection, right? So integrate. What's the integral of cosine over zero to two pi? Zero. Sine zero. So you only have to do one integration, right? The, the areas cancel each other out. So if you look carefully, sometimes you can save a lot of time. So the integral of cosine from 0 to 2 pi is 0, the integral of sine from 0 to 2 pi is 0. So essentially, you just have to integrate t. So if I integrate t, I get a half t squared. So uh, if I cancel that off, you're going to get something like 2 uh, root 2 pi squared. Okay, so you can see, hopefully, hopefully, you can see that there's a, a definite structure to the solution method for each problem. Parameterize the curve, describe it mathematically using your, your um, R function. Here it was given. Compute the tangent function the r prime, and look at its magnitude. Can look at the value of f along the curve, multiply everything together and integrate. Any questions so far? Okay, so um, to put this into some perspective, 
let's say um, the helix involved was the, um, let, let's say it was a spring or a coil, and the F was, say, a density function, right? What you've produced there is a measure of the total mass of the, um, of the coil or the um, spring. 